Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, hamdani wa fi ni'mahu wa yukafi mazida. Ya Rabbi, thaka alhamduka ma yanbaghi li jalali wajhika wa li azimi sultanik. Subhanaka na nuhsi thanaan alayka anta kama athnayta ala nafsik. Allahumma salli wa sallam ala Sayyidina Muhammadin. Nurika sari wa madadika al-jari wa jma'ani wa iyaahum bihi fi kulli atwari. وعلى آله وصحبه يا نور وعلينا معهم وفيهم برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين الحمد لله. so we thank Allah سبحانه وتعالى for gathering us in this blessed house from His houses سبحانه وتعالى and in this blessed time the time between the two عشاس as was the custom of our Prophet ﷺ to give life to that which was between the two Ishas. So in following his example as well as that of uh, the scholars of the tradition from whom we learn the, to give life to this time and also to take advantage of this opportunity and not let those intentions that each of you had or the effort that each of you expended <coughs> to come and hear something of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's speech and that of his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and that of their heirs go wasted and to take advantage of that opportunity and some of the knowers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was asked how did you know Allah how did you know Allah through what did you know Allah so he said, Allah bi naqdil azaim. I knew Allah by my resolves being overturned. Whenever I would resolve something, or often I would resolve something and it would be overturned, so through that I knew I wasn't in charge. So um, if you or I were in charge, perhaps uh, a different person would be sitting before you. I know in my case that would definitely be my hope. But we're not in charge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. And um, in each instant, there's something that He's created for you and I. And rather than trying to bring forth what we wish in that instant, we should uh, wait for what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring forth. كُلَّ يَوْمٍ هُوَ فِي شَانٍ Subhanahu wa ta'ala. As He said of Himself, Khidr taught some of the ulama the meaning of this verse. شُؤُونٌ يُبْدِيهَا وَلَا يَبْتَدِيهَا Affairs that he brings forth, uh, though he preordained them, he did not initiate them in that time. So this is something that Allah preordained that we spend these uh, hours and moments. So we ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala that each and every one of you who intended to hear some of the speech of those who unite hearts and direct them to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and to following His Messenger, sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi wasallam, and leading a life through which their heart is purified and they draw nearer to Allah in belovedness and more close to the example of the Prophet wasallam. that Allah give all of you to realize those intentions and more through His mercy and He's the most merciful of the merciful. So these lessons insha'Allah ta'ala over the next evenings will be in the subject matter of purification of the heart. We insha'Allah ta'ala will discuss um, some of that and some of really the beginning of that endeavor as one of the imams of the tradition that al Habib Omar represents, al Imam Abdullah al Haddad, Allah Yurhamahu Allah, mentioned in his book, The Manners of the Travel of the Spiritual Seeker. So, first of all, this matter of purification of the heart. Or you could say this matter of rearing the believer. Inshallah ta'ala over the next night just this is a nasiha from myself to myself and to each of you um, give it your all. 
because this matter of purifying and rearing the heart of the human being is a means or the principal means to the realization of that for which you and I were created. You and I were created to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what we're for. Allah said, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I did not create mankind and jinnkind save that they would worship me. However, Ibn Abbas said that لِيَعْبُدُونَ means that they would know me. So we were created to know and worship Allah. That's the point of us. The point of human beings is that they know Allah and they worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rather, the point of the heavens and the earth is that you and I know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and worship Him. And the greatest means, uh, among the greatest means to that, is this affair of purifying the hearts. And everything, the majority of what's around us right now, particularly in these uh, overdeveloped countries, as one of our friends uh, has coined them, it's about stuff. Most of our education, our occupation, our production and our development is to, is to make stuff. However, these ulama, what they build is human beings. They make you and I into what we're supposed to be for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the, again, from the foundation of that is the heart of the human being. And the heart of the human being is more important than the limbs. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, uh, as is narrated by Bukhari and Muslim as part of a longer hadith, Allah wa fil jasadi mudgha, idha salahat salah al jasadu kullu. Is there not in the body a piece of flesh? If it is pious, the whole body will be pious. Wa idha fasadat fasad al jasadu kullu. And if it is corrupt, the whole body, the whole body will be corrupt. Allah wa hi al qalb. Is it not the heart? So the Piety or corruption of one's body is based upon one's heart. And it's the foundation uh, of this affair. And the works of the heart are greater than the works of the limbs. So inshallah ta'ala, we'll just discuss a little bit from one of the books of Imam al-Haddad about this way of purifying the heart. And he says, Faslun. اعلموا أن أول الطريق بعث قوي يقذف في قلب العبد يزعجه ويقلقه ويحثه على الإكبال على الله والدار والدار الآخرة وعلى الإعراض عن الدنيا وعم الخلق مشغولون به من عمارتها وجمعها والتمتع بشهواتها والاغترار بزخارفها so he said, chapter. He said, know this, that the beginning of the way, the beginning of the way, the beginning of your and my journey and nearness to Allah, if you will, is a powerful drive. A powerful drive which is cast into the heart of the slave. It unnerves him and makes him anxious and urges him to direct himself to Allah and the abode of the hereafter and to turn away from this world and everything that people are distracted with of developing it meaning the world and amassing it and enjoying its desires and being deluded by its fineries so the beginning of this way that you'll be studying through these nights inshallah ta'ala it's an, a, a, a drive, a drive of longing for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is cast into your and my heart. And this drive will cause the servant to look at his or her condition and to feel dissatisfied with their relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as it is at that given time. A longing to know Allah, to be near Allah, to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to be pleasing to Allah, to emulate Allah's messenger, not to disobey Allah. 
that drives them to take this path and try to draw near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they become dissatisfied with those things that people are engaged in around them. And if you look at this, what Imam al-Haddad mentioned, Imam al-Haddad was in the 12th century, but again, this is, ob- this is the case now or even more the case. So they turn away from those things that most people are engaged in of developing the world. And again, that's an outward development. And if we look at the reality of what's occurring, we're developing the world materially at the, de- uh, at the expense of demolishing ourselves spiritually. So we see a physical development and a spiritual demolition. Whereas the message of the prophets, you see the opposite. Initially, you see uh, an inward uh, development, and then that may result in an outward development. But the focus isn't on outward. And also amassing it and enjoying it with the Adab Allah Ta'ala. So Imam al Haddad goes on to say, وَهَذَا الْبَعِثْ مِنْ جُنُودِ اللَّهِ الْبَاطِنَةِ وَهُوَ مِنْ نَفَحَاتِ الْعِنَايَةِ وَعَلَامَ الْهِدَايَةِ and he said, and this inspirational drive is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's inward armies or from his inward legions. And it is from Allah, the gifts of divine concern and from the signs of right guidance. So the origin of this notion, this inclination in your heart and my heart to draw nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, its origin is Allah. You could say that it's a invitation, it's an invitation from Allah to you or I to draw nearer to His presence subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's a great, great precious gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And He'll discuss um, the protection of that gift in a moment. وَكَثِيرًا مَا يُفْتَحُ بِهِ عَلَى الْعَبْدِ عِنْدَ التَّخْوِيفِ وَالتَّرْغِيبِ وَالتَّشْوِيقِ وَعِنْدَ النَّظَرِ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَىٰ وَالنَّظَرِ مِنْهُمْ وَقَدْ يَكَعُوا بِدُونِ سَبَبٍ And he said, and oftentimes the servant is giving the opening of receiving this gift, the beginning of the path that is cast into their heart, when they hear admonitions which strike fear in their heart. They hear verses of Allah's book, for instance, that strike fear in their hearts. Or they hear verses which encourage them, or verses which cause longing in their hearts. Or when gazing at the people of Allah Ta'ala and when receiving their gaze. So, for instance, the, the first, how many a time? Were you or I or was one of us in a khutbah of Jumu'ah? And we heard a verse recited of Allah's book or a prophetic tradition that maybe made us fear or made us feel hope or made us feel longing. And that, that stirred us up. And from that point on, perhaps our worship changed for the rest of our life. Or perhaps it changed for a day or a week. An example of someone like this is Fudayl bin Iyab. He's from the group of the people of this way who are known as the men of the Risala of Al-Qushayri. And Qushayri wrote a treatise of the early books of, of purification of the heart and described the early scholars of this discipline. One of them was Fudayl bin Iyab. Fudayl bin Iyab was a highwayman. He was a, a robber. That was what he did. And he was known for that. So Fudayl, one evening, what was he doing? This evening he wasn't robbing. He was climbing a ladder or climbing up to the room of a girl that he was in love with. So disobedience on top of disobedience. However, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordained good for him. And when he was in this... Uh, it was again an outward ascent, but an inward descent. Outwardly he was climbing, but inwardly he was 
falling down to his base desires, he heard someone recite the verse, Alam yatni lilladina amanu an takhsha'a qulubuhum li dhikrillah. Has the time not come for those who believe that their hearts humble themselves to the remembrance of Allah? And that verse penetrated his heart and he said, the time has come, O Lord. So he made tawbah in that instant from again, highway robbery. So a verse such as this may be recited or a prophetic tradition describing those whom Allah loves. For instance, maybe some of us heard the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hadith Qudsi related by Bukhari. Indeed, my servant does not draw nearer to me by anything more beloved to me than what I have made an obligation upon him. And my servant continues to draw nearer to me by nafil works, by supererogatory works until I love him. And when I have loved him, I am the hearing with which he hears, and the seeing with which he sees, and the hand with which he grasps, and the foot with which he walks. So perhaps one of us heard this tradition, this hadith Qudsi, and that stirred in us a longing to be that type of lordly slave who's loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that longing, that's this ba'ith. That's this drive that Imam al-Haddad is talking about. And he said, and it might happen, and this is often the case. This is often the case that it occurs when looking at the people of Allah and them looking at you. So may Allah give us to see the people of Allah. And um, as Imam Haddad said, that is often the case. And that gaze at the people of Allah connects back to the gaze that the companions had at Allah's Messenger. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam. And the gaze that he gave, that they had of him and that he gave them. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam. So the Sahaba, radiallahu anhum, for instance, what's, what makes a companion a companion? A companion is someone who believed in Allah's Messenger who, during his life and died in his Imam. So a companion, by merely meeting Allah's Messenger, a transformation would occur. An entire transformation would occur. Some of them just by being in his presence. Some of them would spend more time with him. But anyone who was in, in his presence, for instance, believing, became a sahaba. What is a, a companion? A companion is higher than any of the, of the other awliya. A companion, all of them are upright. Because of the strength of the prophetic light. And some of them, they may have started out as an enemy. As a bitter enemy. For instance, there was one Fulala. The Prophet ﷺ after Fat Mecca were circumambulating the Kaaba. And Fulala creeped up behind him to kill him, to try to kill him. So the Prophet ﷺ was made aware of this and he turned around and asked him, he said, O oh, Fulala, what are you saying to yourself? What are you thinking to yourself? And he said, nothing, I'm remembering Allah. And he said, Astaghfirullah. He said, Say, seek Allah's forgiveness. And he placed his noble hand on the chest of Fudala. And when he removed his hand, Fudala said that there was no one more beloved to him than Allah's Messenger. So similarly, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that's how the people of Allah are. Sometimes just sitting in their presence, sometimes just gazing at them, sometimes receiving their gaze. Once there is a people, and Habib Omar has told us a story many times, there was a group of people that were trying to seek rain. So they went out and they prayed and prayed and rain didn't come. So then someone who was a stranger came. So he raised his hand and he made a dua and the rain fell. So they asked him, 
What dua did you make? And he said, I made dua, O oh Allah, by the right of what is in this head of mine, give them rain. So then they said, that's an unusual dua. What is, it, what is in this head of yours? And they said, these are our two eyes which saw Abu Yazid al-Bustami. Their eyes that saw Abu Yazid al-Bustami. So by the right of those eyes, he sought rain and received rain. So this affair of the, uh, of the gaze, um, there's a lot to be said for it. And we assure you that um, if, by Allah's permission, these gatherings continue, and you sit in the presence of those people of Allah, and gaze upon them and they gaze upon you, this drive will be stirred in many of our hearts. And it will be renewed in many of our hearts. And it might not occur for any reason at all. It might not occur for any reason of all. Some of us, we weren't even Muslim. And something just inspired us and directed us toward Islam and drove us toward Islam and we embraced Islam, alhamdulillah. And we ask Allah to give us steadfastness so Allah might cast this into someone's heart without any intermediacy. And alhamdulillah wa shukrillah ala dalik. So he goes on to discuss this and he said, and he said so exposing yourself to the opportunities in which Allah's gifts are disseminated is something that we have been commanded to do and encouraged to do and waiting and procrastination without exposing ourselves to opportunities for Allah's gifts and remaining at His door is foolishness and stupidity. So basically he's saying we're commanded to try to seek these opportunities. As you all have done tonight by coming to these masajid for instance, and listening to lessons, and coming to sermons. And he said, how would this not be the case? And the Prophet ﷺ said, Indeed, your Lord has in the days of your lives gifts. Would you not present yourself for them? So when we, for instance, come to one of these lessons with Allah's people, or a lesson in which Allah's book is recited, or a gathering in which the hadith of His Prophet ﷺ is recited, or a gathering of dhikr, those are opportunities to receive a dissemination of Allah's gifts. So basically he's saying we should take those opportunities. And we should seek this inspirational drive. He goes on, وَمَنْ أَكْرَمَهُ اللَّهُ بِهَادَ الْبَعِثِ الشَّرِيفِ فَلْيَعْرِثْ قَدْرَهُ الْمُنِيفِ وَلْيَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ مِنْ أَعْظَمِ نِعْمِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَ عَلَيْهِ اللَّتِي لَا يُقَدَّرُ قَدْرُهَا وَلَا يَبْلُغُ شُكْرُهَا he said, so someone who is given this inspirational drive, then let him know its sublime station. And let him know that this is from the greatest of Allah's gifts for him or her, Most High. And let him see it as very valuable. So again, this gift is an invitation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as you'll say in a moment, some people live their whole lives without receiving it. The majority of the people on the surface of the earth today are not from the Ummah of Muhammad wasallam. And even many that are from the Ummah of Muhammad, will, unfortunately we ask Allah to improve our conditions, are in a state of heedlessness. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you and I to desire Him, and desiring Him is a means to the aim for which we were created, for which all of human beings were created, and we're from some of the few that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose to give that gift, we should realize its magnitude. It's a means to the realization of our purpose, to knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to reconnecting and becoming 
reintroduced to our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala, to renewing our fitrah that so many things in this world destroy. You and I met Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Each of us met Him on a day that was called the day of Alas to be Rabbikum. Allah gathered us all and He said, as He mentions in the Quran, Alas to be Rabbikum. Am I not your Lord? And they said, Bala shahidna. We said, Bala shahidna. We heard Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's address and we acknowledge His oneness and His Lordship subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this inspirational drive that's cast in our heart, it's calling us to travel that path, to come back to that spiritual homeland, and be reintroduced to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and experience Him subhanahu as we once did. So it's a precious gift, and we should realize that. So he says, وَلَا يَبْلُغُ شُكْرُهَا فَلْيُبَالِكْ فِي شُكْرِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى عَلَى مَا مَنَحَهُ وَأَوْلَاهُ وَخَصَّهُ بِهِ مِنْ بَيْنِ أَشْكَالِهِ وَأَكْرَانِهِ فَكَمْ مِنْ مُسْلِمٍ بَلَغَ عُمْرُهُ ثَمَانِينَ سَنَةً وَأَكْثَرْ وَلَمْ يَجِدْ هَذَا الْبَاعِثِ وَلَمْ يَطْرُقْهُ يَوْمًا مِنَ الدَّهَرِ And he said, so the person should know its value and that they cannot uh, give it its due. Nor can we thank Allah therefore. So let him, obviously, or her, strive in showing gratitude to Allah for the favor he has been given and provided subhanahu. And the election that he has given to this slave from between others that were like him and his peers. So how many a Muslim has reached the year, the age of 80 years old, and or more and has not found this drive, nor has it even occurred one day in their life. So, what, what makes us be sitting in this masjid right now, on Friday night, listening to the speech of an imam from the 12th century who's considered to be the reviver of that century? What made us want to be near Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and made unfortunately many from our ummah in a state of heedlessness in this hour? The youngsters that are here, what made you and I here rather than being in a nightclub, for instance, with the other Billah Ta'ala? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's concern. Nothing but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's grace. So, part of this or this gratitude that we show entails us admitting that this was, had nothing to do with us. Nothing was done on our part for which we deserved a gift of an opportunity to be near Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So don't say that I, you know, I've been making my tahajjud and fasting and doing a lot of dhikr, so I deserve to be in the company of, of the speech of the people of Allah. No, Allah that you and that and everything are gifts from Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if we found ourselves in a state of obedience before this, we owe more gratitude than the one that was in a state of disobedience before this. Because our worship owes gratitude. It was a, a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So part of the thanks means declaring Allah's favor and having vision of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's favor and not giving ourselves credit for it. Our heart being full of vision of the favor Allah has given us. And then it also is expressed intensely on our tongue by praising Allah much. So this should be a, a pray, a, 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 a gratitude which is expressed in word as well as in deed. So we don't only thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by our, our lip service by saying alhamdulillah, but we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by our deeds. So what are the deeds for which we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us the gift of wanting to be near Him? There's three deeds that Imam al-Haddad will mention. <coughs> that we protect it and that we try to strengthen this gift and that we respond to this invitation. So if you or I, for instance, and, and, and rest assured by, with Allah's permission, subhanahu wa ta'ala, in these upcoming days and nights, 
and in many of the nights of the, of, of the Ummah of Muhammad, this drive will be cast into our heart. And we'll, we'll have a desire to be nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, how do we respond to that? In three ways. We thank Allah for it with three things. Again, with protection, strengthening, and, and, and answering. So he'll describe these. And he says, وَعَلَى الْمُرِيدِ أَنْ يَتْتَهِدَ فِي تَقْوِيَتِهِ وَحِفْتِهِ وَإِجَابَتِهِ أَعْنِ الْبَائِثِ And he said, so then the seeker is obliged to strive in strengthening it, preserving it, and responding thereto. أَعْنِ هَذَا الْبَائِثِ To this inspirational drive. فَتَقْوِيَتُهُ بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَالْفِكْرِ فِيمَا عِنْدُ اللَّهِ وَالْمُجَالَسَةِ لِأَهْلِ اللَّهِ And he said, so strengthening it is by remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and reflecting upon that which is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And keeping the company of those people of Allah. And we ask Allah to give us a great portion thereof. وَحِفْتُهُ بِالْبُعْدِ عَنْ مُجَالَسَةِ الْمَحْجُوبِينَ وَلِعْرَاضِ عَنْ وَسْوَسَةِ الشَّيَاطِينَ And he said, and preserving it is by distancing ourselves from keeping the company of those who are veiled and by ignoring the whisperings of the devils. So notice that with respect to both the occurrence, the occurrence of this gift that he's describing, the strengthening of this gift that he's describing, and the preservation of these, this gift that he's describing, he's encouraged us to be careful of our company. So that shows us that one of the fundamentals of spiritual development and unfortunately of spirit or one of the fundamental causes, one of the major causes of spiritual harm is the company that you and I keep. The Prophet ﷺ said, as is narrated by Bukhari and Muslim, the example of a pious companion and an evil companion is that of a musk merchant and the blower of a bellows, meaning a blacksmith. He said, the seller of musk will either give you some, or you'll purchase some from him, or you'll smell a pleasant fragrance. And the blacksmith will either burn your clothing or you'll smell a stench. So if we look at this, these two type of companies are like the company of the people of Allah and the company of those who are, who are veiled. But if we ponder this hadith, and all of us have heard this hadith, however, think about what he's saying. In the first case, when one goes to the musk merchant, he might give you some, that's something that he'll do. And you might purchase some, and that's something that you'll do. Or you'll at least smell a good fragrance, and that's something that neither of you can avoid. He won't stop it and you won't stop it, and that's how good company is. Anytime you or I are in good company, we'll invariably benefit. And as, but, but look at the difference too in this hadith. There's a difference between the one who just waits to receive something and the one who spins. So the one who spins from their wealth and drives a long way and comes in wudu and, and begs Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prior to the gathering and makes tawbah and does their dhikr and sits with adab, they've spent something. That's like the one who's going to purchase some musk. And they're, they're going to invariably get more. And the other one just came and the generosity of the musk merchant, he'll give them some and that's how they are. And someone else might have just sat off in the, in the back, but at least they'll smell from their fragrance. And that is how they are and we ask Allah to, give, to, to give, give us to smell their fragrances. And then in the case of the second, him burning your clothing is something that returns to you and him. Maybe you're not careful or maybe he's not careful and your clothing will be burned. However, the stench is invariably there. And that's how bad company is. And Imam Ghazali compares bad company to your deen like someone who every time you meet him, they pull out a, a, a hair of your beard. 
or they pull off one of your threads of your clothing. If you meet this person all the time, you're going to be beardless and you'll be naked. And unfortunately, that's how bad company is. And those of us in environments like this, we have to be particularly careful of our company because we're surrounded by bad company. So the Muslims, for instance, banding together like this is e even more important in these environments. And the Muslims establishing schools so that our children are in good company is even more important in these environments. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase the likes of these. Sometimes we may find ourselves in an environment where there's bad company. In we, can, we can't avoid it. Family, for instance, or those with whom we work. So what does one do in that circumstance? In that circumstance, one is obliged to try to affect the company. Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith of Muslim, the one of you who sees a wrong action, let him change it, change it with his hand. And if not, then with his tongue. And if not, with his heart, and that's the weakest of faith. So if we're in, bad, in a bad environment, we have to strive to make a change. And otherwise, the darkness of that environment seeps into our heart. So for instance, in a non-Muslim land, that, it's just the land is bad company. So how do we protect ourselves from that land? By intending to, to convey the da'wah of, of Islam in that land. The greatest protection for you and I from the difficulties and the darkness that's in this environment is for us to intend in this environment earnestly and strive sincerely to convey the da'wah. And then if someone's in, an, in, an, in a place where they can't make a change, they should remove themselves and if they can't remove themselves bodily, leave their body there and ignore it with their heart and just stay in a state of dhikr. And hopefully it won't be of harm. But if someone plunges into it, and likes it. The worst thing about bad company is, is liking how that, how that person or the situation is. Because it entails loving something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hates. Three things, if they're in someone, they'll find the sweetest of faith. What is the first of, uh, what are they? That Allah and His message, the one whom Allah and His messenger were more beloved to Him than everything else. And the one who loves a slave, he doesn't love him for anything other than Allah. And the one who hates to return to disbelief after Allah saved him, like he would hate to be thrown into the fire. So loving for Allah and hating for Allah is the cause of finding the sweetness of faith. And not loving for Allah, and loving for Allah at force, is a cause of the weakening of faith. It's a cause of the weakening of faith. Allah said, لَا تَجِدُوا قَوْمًا يُؤْمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ يُوَادُّونَ مَنْ حَادَّ اللَّهِ وَلَوْ كَانُوا آبَاءَهُمْ إِلَىٰ آخِرَ الْآيَةِ You won't find a people who believe in Allah on the final day loving those who oppose Allah even if they were their fathers. So when we accept that company and love it and incline toward it, and see it as the pinnacle, and see it as what the world needs, and see its system as the most appropriate, and embrace it, that causes the darkness of that company to seep into our hearts. However, if we see the pitiful condition of those who don't know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and, and, or the pitiful condition of those who disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we strive to make da'wah, that's one of the most powerful means to travel this way. So if you find yourself in, in, in bad company, and we're just emphasizing this point, because invariably in these lands we're going to be in that situation, the only recourse you have is to try to change the situation and remove yourself therefrom. And after that, all that remains again is the weakness of, weakest of faith, or the weakening of faith with the Yad of Allah Ta'ala. La ilaha illallah. So just to wrap up. So he said, so that's strengthening and um, protecting and ignoring the whisperings of the devils, ignoring them, seeking refuge in Allah from them. وَإِجَابَتُهُ بِأَنْ يُبَادِرَ بِالْإِنَابَةِ إِلَى اللَّهِ تَعَالَى وَيَسْتُقُوا فِي الْإِقْبَالِ عَلَى اللَّهِ وَلَا يَتَوَانَى وَلَا يُصَوِّفُ And how do we respond to this? How do we respond when Allah casts in our heart a desire to be nearer to Him? He said, by rushing to return to Allah, and by genuinely or honestly directing ourselves to Allah. 
ولا يتوانى ولا يصوف ولا يتباطا ولا يؤخرا وقد امكنته الفرصه فليح فلين تهزها وفتح له الباب فليدخل ودعاه الداعي فليسرع and he said so the person should not uh, put it off nor should they procrastinate nor should they be slow nor should they lag and he said the opportunity has presented itself so let him take it and the door has been opened so let him enter and the in, the caller has summoned so let him rush wal yahdhar min ghadin ba'da ghadin fa inna dhalika min amal ash-shaytan wal yuqbil wa la yatathabbat wa la yata'allal bi 'adam al-faragh wa 'adam al-salahiyya and he said so let the person be wary of saying the day after tomorrow after tomorrow and he said for that is from the deeds of devils and let this person draw near and not uh, be put off and not make excuses of not having free time or not having the capability wa qala albu abu rabi' rahimahullah siru ila allah urjan wa makasir wa la tantadhiru as-sihhata fa inna intidhar as-sihhata batala and abu rabi' allah have mercy upon him said travel to allah limping and with broken limbs and do not wait for health for indeed waiting for good health is idleness so how many times do we say that when i'm healthier when i have more money when i graduate when summer recess comes then i'm going to focus on my deen and it may never that those opportunities may never come and they said that's idleness wa qala wa qala ibn ataila fi al hikam ihalatuk al amal ala wujud al faragh min ru'unat al nufus and ibn ataila as secondary said in his aphorisms your putting off deeds until you have free time is from the stupidities the stupid stupidities of the egos of the lower selves so basically imam haddad here is saying that if an opportunity for you or i comes to draw nearer to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that responding is to respond immediately as we are and how we are broken and limping so yes i am a wage earner i have an occupation tayyib when you know when summer comes when i change my job then i'll have this much vacation then i'm going to take some time for my deen no right now as a wage earner one takes time one strives to draw nearer to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right now as a mother or a homemaker one strives to draw nearer to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right now as a student one strives to draw nearer to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the condition in which one finds oneself and what sought from us isn't uh that all of us have the works of again what you read of the awliya on the path they desired to draw near to allah and wandered off into the desert and didn't come out for 40 years what sought from you and i is that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees from us us honestly giving what we can in the circumstances that we're in to worship allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that honest sincere drive for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's what sought from us an example is in the hajj allah said about the sacrificial animals layyana lallaha luhumuha wala dimauha walakin yanalu taqwa minkum he said their flesh doesn't reach allah nor their blood however the taqwa of your hearts reaches allah imam ghazali said a quality within the heart that drove the slave to obey allah So again someone might be a homemaker. She might have, you know, 3-year-olds jumping on her all the time and when she's praying and meals to cook and what have you and something strikes her heart to draw near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, she strives to draw near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that circumstance. Someone is a businessman. They strive near to, they strive to draw near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a businessman. Someone is a student they strive to draw near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as uh, a student and be honest and strive and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, is too generous to let down those who seek from him uh, wa sallallahu ala sayyidina muhammad wa alihi wa sallam walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin
five minutes? Alhamdulillah. So that's a little bit of uh, Imam al Haddad's discussion of the inspirational drive. And we wanted to pr proceed um, these lessons through these evenings with that discussion because we found um, the company of the likes of those who will teach them to stir that drive in the hearts. So we wanted this to be something of a preface to that and um, describing. The, that beginning of this path and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he grant for each of us and all of us that all of our intentions that we've had and that we inshallah will continue to make for these nights be fulfilled in the best of ways and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cast this inspirational drive to draw nearer to him and this longing for him and to seek his love into the heart of each of us of all of us and all of our spouses and all of our children and loved ones and the people of this land. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us keys in this land which open good and locks which prevent evil. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those whom He chooses to carry the trust of the message of His final Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this land. And that we sincerely discharge this trust in terms of ourselves and our persons, our eyes, our ears, our tongues, our bodies, our intentions, and our actions, and that we discharge this trust in terms of our spouses and those in our household, and our children, and in terms of, we convey this trust fully and fulfill it with respect to these neighbors around us, of those who have not been given yet, La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He make this the last speech that we say from the world. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa alayhi wa sallam, walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, al-Fatiha.